Oh, hello everybody, welcome back to another graphic art video and today we will be checking out, look at these guys, we got Intel Nook with A770 16GB, so uh, what do you say, uh, shall we unbox this bad boy and see how it works and compare it with A770 16GB, let's go! So here we have this uh, small box of Interlook with A770 graphic card inside and as you can see if you compare this small box to this PlayStation 5 we have here, look at this, it's much smaller guys so uh, let's see how it is now, we just flip it over, cut below and then what you do is open like so, yes look at this guys, Intel Canyon Nook Serpent Edition and here we go guys, Two. no place but whatever Let's pull it out and see how it is. Here we have one box. One box is also here if you pull it out, see? Let me put it upside, I will remove this box so we don't have it in the way. And let's go, let's see what's inside. Here we have this small Intel Nook system it seems. Oh my god, how do I put this out? Like so. Oh. Look at this guys, compared to PlayStation 5. Oh my god, <laughs> this is it. And here's my PC streaming down here if you follow me. Look, this one, oh, here is my main rig, here is my streaming PC right now and compared to my streaming PC, look at this. Awesome, awesome, I will have it here on the table and we'll see how it goes, but let's unbox some more. Here we go guys, what do we have here included, what's this, if we unbox this, it seems like it's a stand for our Nook system, some sort of screws inside and stickers, oh we get Intel Arc stickers, let's go, this is what everybody wants when buying an Intel Arc graphic card system, so yeah, nice stand over here, it's probably like so, we put it up, right, like so. I think this should be it, but yeah, oh yeah, it, it is <laughs> sticking right good there, let's see what else is inside, what do we have here, Two. could be power brick I think, and everything else, yeah, we have the power brick, oh, uh, let's see how much wattage it is, and uh, here we have a 330 watt power supply unit, looks good, we'll test this out and see how it performs. So yeah, there's probably nothing much else in the box, look, it's an empty one, so uh, what else do you want me to put out, nothing else, so this is, okay, now we have this, upgrade RAM, we need 32 gigs for my streaming recording, so I ordered this because this one, this bad boy here, just uh, gets 16 gigabytes of RAM, so I need to upgrade that, we will open this one up sooner or later, just not right now, first I need to test it, but yeah, RAM upgrade coming soon, and uh, that's it, what, shall we go test this out and see how it compares with normal A770? Alright, let's go! So guys, before we even started we already came into a problem. This, you know what this means? 3 beeps and then a pause of 2.5 seconds? It's DRAM problem, oh my god, freshly bought system and I already have to open it up and uh, use this RAM. What's going on, man? Shall I just do warranty? No, no, we fix this because we are a computer repair shop. But if my supplier will then say if something goes wrong and we get uh, uh, no warranty on this when we open it up right now, I'm gonna be furious, like really furious. But uh, yeah, let's open this bad boy up and uh, see what's going on. Uh, so they at least included this... Uh, screwdriver you could say it's hex uh, now we will put this out we will open it up let me just unscrew all of them and uh, continue so once you unscrew these screws at the back you just simply lift it up and uh, yeah we get inside I Okay guys, so now that uh, we have the top cover off, we will open it further by probably removing this screw here, as you can see, and this screw, and this screw up here, and this screw, and uh, these two more screws here, down here, and uh, hopefully then we will get inside Intel Nook system and fix this DRAM error issue. 
God damn it. Now I probably even won't be able to RMA the, uh, just the memory because it was bought as a whole system. So uh, rip that, but okay, let's go. Ah, now I see what's going on. We removed the top cover here and guess I've actually bought the system with no RAM. <laughs> Damn, it's good that I bought actually 32 gigabytes of it because, uh, yeah. Okay, okay, let's set this bad boy up and uh, continue. I will just quickly check if this system actually supports uh, NVMe PCIe 4. We have two NVMe, probably PCIe 4 or PCIe 3. I have to check on that. I will uh, write here in the video once I know. And uh, we have NVMe SATA, so this is probably the slower drive, which uses compatible 500 uh, megabyte uh, SATA SSD. SSD. So uh, yeah, let's go. Insert this inside and uh, test this bad boy out. Ah, so actually I read here that uh, the normal 16 gigs and 500 gigabytes of NVMe comes at around, let's check here, the price a bit more than what I paid for. I paid about uh, 1,200 uh, no, 1, euros. So, um, okay, I mean, this is much better because I got really cheap NVMe disk and uh, good RAM. Here we have them. This uh, It's Vengeance, like I said before. Uh, 320 megahertz, uh, 32,000. I don't know how to say it. Here we have Vengeance 3200 MHz RAM uh, CL22. I sure hope we can overclock this, but okay. It's, I think, the best this motherboard can do. So, yeah, I bought this one. One RAM go. And here goes the second 16 GB stick. Uh, you know what guys, I just found out it supports PCIe 4, so uh, we will be using actually not 2 terabytes, which would be actually ideal, but uh, we will be using here uh, with the black uh, SN850, I think it is, yeah, with heatsink on, because uh, that uh, Fury doesn't have heatsink on, so uh, yeah, we will use this one, let's go. Yeah, we will be just unscrewing the first one. Oh recording today i don't have help this is the second day that i check this oh is this too not the right screw we, oh no. yeah this one should do even though it's chipped but uh, should be fine yeah it's screwing up take this bad boy out still no oh. is this the longest nvme screw you've ever seen oh look at this guys oh my camera is not focusing well but yeah God damn, so big. Okay, now that everything is in, we can uh, close this up and uh, go ahead and test some games and compare this system to A770 16 gigabytes of the one we have in my main rig, which you already saw. Here it is, running, cool, nice, smooth. Let's go and see how it goes. Okay, guys, so we have one more little bit problem. God damn it. Uh, if it hit sync, it won't close properly. Maybe if I... I tried forcing it down. I thought I would break the LEDs and everything. i rather not try it anymore. So I'll just remove that and use a PCIe 3 disk. So that one doesn't overheat that much than PCIe 4 does. God damn it. Okay. Let me just quickly insert this uh, with the blue SN570 disk. And be done with it, close it up, and finally test this system. God damn it, now so much work. Let's go. Hey, we got some life out of our Nuke system. Let's go. No bootable device has been detected, but okay, let me quickly set up Windows and everything, and I'll be right back. Oh, here we have the bias screen of our Intel Arc, but okay, I don't have mouse, so we'll be just using keyboard, but here we have advanced and storage settings, onboard devices, VLAN controllers, LAN, okay, storage, let's see if it detects, it detects our disk at PCIe 4 for some reason, but okay, video, eGPU memory, this is a location for stuff, I don't know, we'll check this out later, LED controls, can we actually change the colors of... Uh, 
Oh, yes, let's go. We can actually change the color of our uh, sexy uh, display on Intel Nook Serpent Canyon. Let's go. Uh, let's see what about cooling. What say here? Ah, uh, it just says some info. Fan control, it should be cool, quiet, fan off capability. Oh, I don't even hear it actually. So uh, I'll play around with these settings and see what kind of cooling performance you can get on this system. But uh, yeah, let's go. Performance, see what's here. Processor, we can actually enable hyper training and some stuff. But okay, what about memory? Oh, yes, let's go, guys. We can overclock our memory. Also, the timings. Huh? That's good, that's good. I will play around with this and hopefully improve the performance a bit and compare stock to overclock and see what kind of difference we get. But yeah, let me set up everything and go to do some gaming. So here we have a 330 watts uh, battery uh, with i7 12700H and uh, 32 gigabytes of uh, CL22 300 3200 mega megahertz ram and uh, yeah a770 16 gigabytes let's go the first game we'll be going to test today is uh, actually returnal this is one of the best games i like to play i spend lots of time in returnal especially in the towers uh, where you have to climb it as far as possible so yeah here will be the settings we'll be using uh, we will just put everything to APQ and a ray trace shadows. Huh? Why don't why don't you? Yeah, let's just do this ray trace shadows as well to APQ. Let's set everything to max except uh, you know what the volumetric fog which uh, dropped our FPS before and uh, probably still does now. So uh, yeah, 1440p max setting uh, with ray tracing on medium volumetric fog and uh, we will be using uh, here XSS quality because uh, yeah. Let's see if it can actually run about 60 FPS at 1440p, uh, the A770M, uh, the smaller edition with 16GB of VM, and uh, look at these guys. I know we are not in that much of a remaining area. Oh, you saw the graphical glitches there? Uh, it, does it happen also on your Interarch card in Eternal? Let me know, but yeah, look at this, we are holding about 70 FPS. Now, here, later on, when we start to do some battles, you can see when we shoot and lots of practical effects are going on in these small confined spaces in Eternal you will be still able to get uh, a smooth 60 FPS experience with uh, ray tracing on everything except to the max except volumetric fog and yeah I mean this uh, looks and uh, performs really well I was uh, uh, actually playing this uh, for quite some time I think I got to the third stage a lot and uh, it was I think the 17th floor not that bad considering i was playing first time in uh, this system and yeah Ooh, and what do you say is the performance acceptable this looks really good guys if you ask me it's totally playable and uh, later on we will also be actually comparing this uh, performance because uh, returnal has uh, internal benchmark to test the performance of the graphic card and your system for this game so yeah, we will be comparing my main week which, uh, with this one and see if uh, we get similar uh, performance to A770 16 bits which is a dedicated GPU in my main week or uh, yeah we will see guys sooner or later I will show you the benchmark but yeah here we go 60 FPS in the most intense scenes here lots of particles going on and you see they are still holding uh, about 60 the FPS average so it's safe to say that uh, Returnal is a really well optimized game especially on Intel Arc and uh, I salute the developers for that because like I said I played this game a lot so yeah uh, let's go you know what guys let me show you the promised benchmark so here we go uh, at the top right corner we will have my main uh, overlay from the main system and on the left sorry it's a bit smaller we will have uh, the A770M system, the Interlook Serpent. And uh, yeah, guys, as you can see, we are getting about, what, 10 FPS less than uh, what uh, the main A770 is actually giving. But uh, do know that uh, A770 16 gigabytes in my main system uh, has actually 2400 megahertz clock speed, but uh, the A770M, which takes like 80 watts less than the main one, 
uh, has a much lower clock speed, which is 1900. Uh, I was actually able to test it out a bit more and uh, figure that uh, 2050 MHz clock speed can be achievable, but we need to do some hacks, which I'll make a later on video for this. But yeah, there is no overclocking support on uh, Intel Arc A770M and uh, before I also said that uh, we will be try to overclock RAM. It's actually not possible until I modify the BIOS and change the default profile to my optimized RAM timings, which uh, will be quite a pain uh, in the ass to do. But uh, yeah, we will be doing that and uh, see. If we can actually make it work or not but uh, i was talking to intel support and they said that uh, this system actually does not support xe xmp profiles so uh, yeah that's the only way to do it uh, bios is actually available online so that's good uh, we will be able to modify that but, uh, yes uh, i really wonder if that will be possible but uh, out of the box experience on this intel MOOC system i must say it's pretty good about uh, it depends in some games but about five to ten percent uh, performance difference is uh, between the dedicated gpu and the one that's in here which is the m version but yeah i mean for 110 watts it's performing really well here we have see 64 fps average was there for uh, i mean 54 fps average was there for a770 m so let's compare it now to the a770 dedicated gpu and as you can see the average was 62 so uh, a bit better performance there on the dedicated gpu but uh, yes uh, that's it for eternal let's move on to the next game shall we uh, let's taste this uh, callisto protocol uh, they fixed it uh, ray tracing not long ago. I already made a video about it, but in this uh, test, we will actually not be using ray tracing. We'll just put everything to max and 4040p setting and uh, see what kind of performance we get in this game. But uh, if it's anything to go by from the A770 dedicated GPU, should be possible to run about uh, 45 60 FPS without FSR at uh, 1440p max setting. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see. Uh, we needed uh, FSR back then when we tested this uh, to actually get a more stable uh, 60 FPS uh, performance. But that we tested at 4K. I will also leave down in the description for all, all the links to the benchmarks I've already recorded on A770, so you can compare that. But uh, don't worry, we will be also comparing uh, some uh, benchmark mode test in this game, but let's just first go and see how the gameplay compares, because, you know, benchmarks are always so stressful for the system, and once you go in-game, it's usually a bit better performance than what we can see in the benchmark. So, as you can see, guys, like I said before we started the video, about uh, 45 60 fps average in this game at 1440p ultra setting uh, with uh, I mean high setting max setting whatever uh, it's uh, yeah almost the same as uh, with the dedicated a 770 gpu i suspect we are losing about uh, again in this case uh, three to four fps we will later see in the benchmark when we compare but yeah it was actually a smooth experience except the, these flashing bugs Man, my screen was going weird. I'm not sure what was going on. Uh, before it was okay, but once the... Look at these guys' bugs there. Uh, flashing lights, it's crazy. Uh, before the update that fixed ray tracing in-game, uh, we actually uh, had a working uh, experience here without any graphical glitches. So maybe it's tied to the new update. I'm not sure. If you will be testing Callisto protocol out on your si Intel Arc system, do let me know if... Uh, this is uh, something that you experience when uh, playing this game but uh, yeah as you can see you can expect a smooth way over 50 fps i mean in most uh, scenarios without fsr so having a variable refresh rate monitor in this case would be the way to go uh, i haven't actually noticed much drops except in this fighting scene as you can see we dropped to like 45 which uh, can be actually noticeable if you uh, uh, look carefully, but uh, if you have a good VR up on it, uh, it's hard to notice the uh, FPS drops uh, when it happens, but yeah. 
This is a perfectly playable experience. I will sure be taking Interlook Serpent Canyon with me on the go. It will probably replace my uh, uh, gaming laptop for my locations because if uh, a partner has a TV, then this bad boy here will play all the games that I want without any problem. And tag, uh, I will actually have my personal computer with me so I can do this and stuff, you know, maybe record a video for me on my way. But yeah, okay, we leave that for the next time. I just thought it would be a good uh, thing to say because uh, it's really small. So, we, compared to PlayStation 5, uh, this system is much smaller. So, uh, imagine this you go, let's say, with your girlfriend uh, somewhere for a weekend getaway, and uh, you know, you do your stuff, you go out, the dinner, everything you go up to there. And in the evening, you just hook this bad boy up, uh, put two controllers, and uh, go a co op game like it takes two or some other and enjoy, you know, you know what I mean? It will be a good thing to experiment. M maybe I will make a video if this happens, but uh, yeah. Shall we move on to the next game? Hmm? Shall we? Let's go. No, I'm sorry, guys. First, we will be also testing the benchmarking Callisto protocol. I totally forgot to show you, so here it is. Compare the frame uh, frames from uh, left side. It's a 770M. You can see that it's written in the overlay, and the right side is the dedicated GPU running there. Let's go. But you can see, guys, about uh, seven, eight FPS difference from the dedicated GPU than the the A770M can provide. But I mean. You tell me, is this a uh, playable experience? Uh, w would you expect a better performance for uh, a system that actually costs 1.3k euros? Uh, yeah, you could probably build a cheaper ARC system yourself, but uh, I mean... Uh, this was my specific case scenario, I really needed it, a uh, smaller PC for streaming and recording, so yeah. Uh, let's move on now to... Resident Evil 4. This time I will not be injecting any XCSS, we'll just do the pure benchmark mode. M go to the options, you know, we will set everything to max. Here will be the settings that I'll show you. And uh, yeah, we will be also testing this with uh, Intel RK770 dedicated GPU, just like all the previous games that we did right now. And uh, we'll see how it goes. This game doesn't actually have a benchmark mode, so. Uh, I'll try to do the comparison and make it uh, as legit as possible. In the first scene, you will see what I mean. Uh, I did the slow walk without much moving the camera, so you can expect a similar performance. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, when I was recording on my A770M system in Intel Nook, uh, yeah, I had some bug. The cap frame X MSI Afterburner RTS has just wouldn't load, so. Uh, you will have to bear with me with the uh, really small FPS counter in the top left corner and uh, at least the Intel Arc performance overlay worked so uh, you can see all the stats in the rest in the right side in the overlay of Intel Arc performance so yeah uh, it's working actually pretty good without this is without FSR guys okay we don't have ray tracing, which uh, we could actually turn on, but uh, yeah, I mean, not that it's needed. And the performance, look at this, guys. It's, uh, it was a really smooth experience playing this game. I, maybe I would actually advise to use FSR or inject XCSS uh, with the help of my video, which I already recorded before, and uh, maybe do your thing and play the game. Uh, have you finished Resident Evil 4? I have done already a few runs and uh, I will probably do one or two more because uh, I'm a freak for Resident Evil series and I just can't get enough of these games and uh, the 4, it was uh, the last game I played, Resident Evil 4. I have finished all other Resident Evils and this was the last one I played which, uh, like I said in my previous video, shame on me, but uh, yeah. It really is one of the best Resident Evil games out there, so I advise you to buy it and play it because it works really good on Intel Arc. You can get a smooth experience. I mean, uh, there will not be many people that will actually have this system, but uh, you can compare with uh, A770 later on and dedicate the GPU which we'll use and uh, you will see, but... Uh, Here's some more gameplay, some more uh, zombie shooting. Uh, let me know, guys, in the comments if you think this is totally playable or not. And yeah, I mean, 
Good performance for such a small machine. I sure hope that I'll be able to actually overclock uh, 12700H, uh, even though it's not overclockable. But I will try to maybe disable E cores and uh, get my uh, P core performance to the point because right now it's boosting to 4.1, which should apparently boost to 4.7 gigahertz. But uh, I've been playing around a bit and uh, yeah didn't find any currently way to do it so <laughs> we'll see if we can find a way to change that but yeah in the BIOS setting uh, in this Intel NUC system we also got the power saving features which uh, not many uh, system actually have and uh, this graphic card A770M 16 gigabytes is also taking about 40 watts in idle if you don't do the power idle hack trick that we showed in one of my videos and uh, yeah it's a power hungry uh, bad boy in the idle. So here we go, guys. Let's compare this uh, with A770 dedicated GPU. For some reason, uh, RTSS worked on my main rig when I was playing Resident Evil, so I'm not sure. It's a one by one comparison. Okay, I know the FPS in the top left corner is small. I doubt you can see it. So uh, bear with me, put full screen resolution and you will probably see what's happening. And all the metrics are there, but uh, yeah, I mean, Resident Evil 4 was not working that much um, better. It lost way more FPS than previous titles that we've tested. Here you can see it's about 15 FPS difference. And previous titles we saw about uh, 6 to 8 FPS difference. So maybe Intel Arc uh, A770M needs more optimization or maybe this system needs more optimization. I don't know. Though you do need to know that I actually use DDR5 overclocked and uh, also my CPU in the main rig is overclocked. So maybe that is also contributing to uh, have better performance than what we have on my uh, A770M Intel NUC system. But uh, yeah, guys, let's do some Modern Warfare 2. I'm sure you're also here for this. Many people play Modern Warfare 2. Uh, we will not be testing Warzone. I might make a separate video for uh, this graphic card to, to test on Warzone. But uh, what we'll be testing out is actually multiplayer. Yes, here we will be set setting uh, my optimized settings, which I use on all the systems that I've played, even on NVIDIA, AMD, these are my settings that I like to use. I, I see way more, you get nice FPS boost and not much degradation to uh, quality. You can still change some settings here and there to high or medium instead of uh, some to the max that I have. But yeah, if you set something like this, you should be able to get a good performance out of your system in this game. So yeah. Let's go. Uh, as you can see, water uh, physics are still locked and they will probably remain locked uh, until further notice. Probably maybe when next Call of Duty comes, if it will have this, maybe it will work on Intel Arc. If we actually want to uh, be getting new Battle Mage graphic cards, I mean, there's still no news regarding that, but... Uh, Make sure you like, subscribe, you know, to my channel and uh, I'll have a video as soon as I know more about new Intel Arc graphic cards or new drivers or something that's happening to Intel Arc GPUs. You can bet on me that I'll make the update and uh, yeah. Guys, corruption in the lobby. They said they fixed it in the point line driver but uh, it seems not it seems not it is taking some time to repair and fix it so uh, yeah I have to write to Intel to change the change lock from uh, fixed to yet again <laughs> okay at least it's only in the main lobby this graphical box as long as you don't care in game that's good look that's perfectly smooth ex experience we do need XCSS if you want to run this at 1440p, but uh, I mean, I was getting some frags here and there without an issue. Uh, 60 FPS is playable for me. You know, lately, uh, I kind of been missing my 3090 because I was used to my 100 plus FPS in Modern Warfare 2, but uh, 
no more man, I think that this is the main start of the place I'm under one to kill me I actually didn't talk so much of a different between the team since I can't it anymore Except some of the kills, I should've gotten them in the past I think that the team to get them Called, called, I can say that, but uh, yeah. You see, Call of Duty multiplayer, uh, Modern Warfare 2, it's uh, working perfectly. Uh, version, which is uh, in our Nook Inter Serpent Canyon. So, let's just compare it now to our uh, dedicated A770 GPU and see. If we have also 10 FPS difference in this game or not, we actually have benchmarks, so this will be a big help. Oh, here we go! And as you can see here, only about uh, 4 FPS difference, guys. Only 4 FPS difference in Modern Warfare 2. Uh, do know that I actually uh, changed the XESS 1.0 to 1.1 because Modern Warfare 2 is still using the older version of. XCSS and uh, this new DLL files actually boost performance by up to 8 FPS which we've seen in my previous videos so uh, if you play Modern Warfare 2 or Inter Arc I really advise you to download XCSS 1.1 and replace all the DLL files in there so you get a much better visual quality uh, when using XCSS you get better FPS so Nothing will hurt, uh, only the benefits are there. Change it. Uh, anti cheat won't ban you because this is XSS, it's just their official DLL files. I haven't been banned, uh, which I also sure hope me won't be, but yeah. Look at these guys, there was only 4 FPS difference, just like we saw before. Nice, nice. So, okay, our next video will be Elden Ring. Uh, this game has 40 FPS cap, so. Uh, we will be just using 1440p maximum settings uh, and uh, ray tracing. We will have turned it off because uh, there's not much of a difference. I advise you to turn off ray tracing in uh, Elden Ring because on Intel Arc uh, that's the only way to actually get a smooth 60 FPS experience at 1440p or 4K. So uh, yeah. Here we are comparing A770M to A770 dedicated GPU in my main system and uh, both are running perfectly fine as you can see, uh, okay, A770M has uh, some drops here and there below 60 but you know it could be tied to the RAM speed, it could be tied to a slower disk that I was using in there it could also be the case of RAM speed or timings because we really can't compare here DDR5 almost 7000 megahertz ram to uh, ddr4 3200 megahertz ram but uh, i mean out of the box experience if you throw in uh, 32 gigabytes of ram and an ssd to into nook system you can kind of expect on a similar performance uh, to the dedicated gpu uh, intel arc a770 except uh, as you can see guys now i'm really not sure probably is the gpu but here we are getting about uh, 5 to 4 FPS less than what we get in my main rig and also the frame time graph, ah, it was a bit shady, uh, had more stutters than it had on my main rig but uh, I would say it's because of the processor. Um, 12700H is not that uh, good compared to 12900K overclocked but I mean it's still a pretty uh, beast uh, CPU in this small yet powerful machine that we have here and uh, I will try I try to do undervolting nothing helps so I'm not sure what I'll do I will surely make another video about this Intel Arc system and uh, how to optimize it uh, what I found out after uh, like three weeks of usage and some other stuff we will compare because I'm really impressed with this system because you can you know, if you see my girlfriend she was like oh you want to see Intel Arc system from now on what about me I hope she's not watching this because I will be uh, <laughs> punished no I'm joking I'm joking we have a good relationship anyways let's move on to the next game epilepsy warning guys 
Make sure you cover the rise in 3, 2, 1. Ah, you trusted me, you covered your eyes? Ah. <laughs> uh, anyways, now our next game will be Dead Space. We will not be using FSR, we will be using uh, Ultra Preset. There is RTAO, but uh, in this case we will be using Ultra Preset and it's not there, it's SSAO. So, uh, yeah, uh, no benchmark in this uh, game, so we will just be using the intro scene here, which we've seen before caused some problems here and there uh, we got the lowest fps possible here in the intro scene so it's much easier for us to compare the fps between the two gpus and uh, as we can see just like we've seen in some in most of the other titles we lose about uh, six to eight fps uh, when uh, using A770M compared to A770 16GB uh, dedicated now. GPU, which is uh, perfectly fine, like I said, for this small system. Uh, trust me, guys, this system looks smaller than the GPU itself. I mean, it's a bit fatter, but if it would be a little bit slimmer, then the Intel Arc A770 would be bigger than the whole machine we have here. And look at the performance we are getting. Just four five fps difference from the main uh, gpu which is uh, really good really good uh, you know what now that i think about it i will actually make another video and uh, do some uh, game testing but uh, i will force megahertz core clocks to 1900 on the dedicated gpu in my main rig and uh, actually see if we can get the uh, same performance as A770M, which uh, I have a good feeling about it will be kind of the same. I think based on the specifications, they are uh, similar. I think they, uh, the A770 normal dedicated GPU has a bit more XE cores. And uh, yeah, I have to check on that. Don't uh, trust me on this info because I've seen the specifications some time ago. I'm just talking to my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyways, guys, look, um, I think the conclusion, uh, though we are still not finished with the video, but the conclusion would be that A770M runs at 1440p most of the titles like 4 to 8 FPS slower than the A770 16GB dedicated GPU, which you can buy at any retailer. So, uh, yeah. Would you be rather building yourself a system with A770 in it or actually get the Nuke Canyon? Uh, if you will be buying Nuke Canyon, make sure you check that you are not buying the Enthusiast's Kit because Enthusiast's Kit is what I bought and that one does not have RAM and disk in there, which in my case was actually really good because I got it way cheaper than the normal system that comes with 500 uh, gigabytes of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM so uh, that's perfect for me now I just probably need a streaming card because I have Elgato 4k 60 which is PCIe maybe I will mod the system by an M.2 adapter to PCIe and try to hook it up in this uh, small uh, bad boy of the system we have here but yeah that's a topic for another video <laughs> Um, I did try actually streaming without capture card and I got some delays and stuff, but uh, I've set it up and I'll make a live stream soon, soon, not uh, tomorrow, but this weekend for sure, and we'll be testing out the difference between no capture card and capture card in this small system, but uh, okay, like I said, I need to go ask my friend to lend me his uh, M.2 to PCIe adapter, before that happens, uh, yeah, hopefully it will be this week. Hopefully, because this is really something I want to try. I, I already have my uh, system open up here. I mean, no, now it's closed, but I will open it up again. Because you can actually change this uh, foil inside and make a custom design. So it glows up custom, not, you know, this uh, Intel Nook Canyon skull, which is a sick design. But we will uh, be printing on their uh, graphic arc logo. So once we light up this PC, the graphic arc logo will be shining all across the room. You know, guys, why not? Why not? <laughs> oh, um, uh, yeah, too much talk. I wasn't focusing on the game here, but uh, as you can see, 
about 4 or 5 FPS difference between A770M and A770. So, uh, yeah, that should be it for that space. Uh, shall we move on to the next game, guys? Yeah, okay, let's move on to the next game, which will be... So, here we have Blue Protocol. It's not actually a game yet, it will come out soon and I decided to add this because we have benchmark here, we're gonna set max settings. I mean max, you can actually put this to more, uh, but uh, this is the maximum preset which uses the uh, level 3 uh, level of detail and uh, yeah, we'll be comparing this with A770M and A770. Here cap frame X uh, decided to actually uh, show FPS for the launcher which was zero so I had to put that on ignore list and uh, as you can see at the top left corner now on A770M we now get FPS uh, counter uh, counting our FPS just fine and uh, yeah as you can see here the performance is uh, uh, it's a bit uh, worse than what we had before it's um, about 15 FPS loss from uh, the dedicated GPU that we have in the main rig but uh, um, this uh, game will probably have some more optimizations coming in the way and uh, also drivers once this comes out uh, I will surely be playing this MMORPG, I'm a big fan of MMORPGs, like I said in my previous videos, Guild Wars 2 was my main game for a long time, had about uh, 5000 hours I think, yeah, I will have to check in, in that game and uh, yeah, then I stopped, but uh, here uh, we have, look at this, the score is counting up there, it's a bit slower, uh, the A770M than the A770, but it's uh, trying to catch it up uh, pretty good as you can see but it will never actually get there at the end you will see the score I think it's about uh, 1000 uh, less or even a bit more which I mean it's still playable as you can see we are getting about uh, 55 60 fps in the city when here it was benchmarking now in the open world where there's some uh, battle going on we get some drops here and there look at this 40 fps 44 fps while on a770 normal dedicated gpu we are actually averaging about 60 fps which uh Hmm, I'm not sure why it works that much better because before we saw if it, the game is optimized well we lose about 5 FPS comparison between the two GPUs but um, yeah look at these guys I mean at some scenes it even boosts to 60 FPS so uh, yeah hmm. uh, maybe lowering some details will have to be done in this game on A770M to actually get a stable 60 FPS but the performance it's actually holding up pretty well uh, except in this intense fireball scene <laughs> we dropped to below 20 fps which uh, induced that uh, lagginess <laughs> which is hard to watch when you play especially uh, if this would happen in guild wars 2 where there was this world this is world this is world well like 30 people uh, in each team engaged in the battle and lots of screen effects were going on. I remember you had to put everything to low, so it didn't lag. So maybe this will also be have to done on this uh, A770M and A770 to maintain a stable 60 FPS in this game. But uh, yeah, I mean, if we are uh, looking here in the benchmarks and comparing at some scenes, we only lose about 6 FPS, which is what we expect when comparing these two GPUs. Look, guys, uh, it, the one test already finished. Uh, it was uh, 9400. I just saw now them uh, one second delay with the FPS counter up there, but uh, I think we can still perfectly fine compare between the two GPUs with this benchmark uh, and uh, yeah sorry for that delay but uh, look at this guys in this intense uh, boss battle scene uh, it's still able to hold pretty well uh, 40 fps was the lowest i mean no 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 right now we saw 35 so that was the lowest we've seen in this boss battle for now but uh, look at the fps on uh, a770 right side 
Man, it's boosting pretty well, so uh, yeah, just like any other MMORPG, you know, guys, uh, CPU will be playing a big part in uh, your FPS and RAM, especially RAM. RAM is really intensive in many MMORPGs, but the CPU is uh, right there as well, so uh, if you are playing MMORPGs, make sure you get a good CPU. In uh, Guild Wars 2, I remember you could have this really low budget GPU. CPU, but then the CPU had to be really good for you to maintain a solid uh, 60 FPS experience. <laughs> but uh, as we compare here, see guys, about 1500 score less on A770M than what we get on A770. When I overclocked this bad boy to 2750 MHz, I remember uh, getting about 11,000 at 1440p uh, ultra preset, I guess you could say it's written there. And uh, yeah, it works really good. Let's go. Next thing uh, we are going to test is actually Final Fantasy 15. I really like this game. It was a long one, especially also 7 remake. So it was also a good game, not on PC, more on PlayStation 5. But uh, yeah, this benchmark kind of represents the final performance. I played with Intel RK770 in uh, Final Fantasy 15, and uh, you could actually turn on, as you can see in the performance, uh, where I was check setting the uh, actually graphical settings. Uh, you could select N NVIDIA Hairworks, which works in this game. Uh, you lose about 2 FPS and only one other setting uh, that worked. But if you use VXAO, then uh, <laughs> that dropped FPS big time. But uh, if you set NVIDIA stuff to off and everything to max at uh, 1440p, uh, you got really good FPS. Above 60 uh, with uh, DirectX 11 native in this game. But uh, yeah, also try DXVK to see if Vulkan Render would work better, but I got the better performance on the DX11 mode, which was native. And it was really playable. Guys, if you want to play this, you can go ahead. Uh, do know that you have to actually uh, download some mods to fix the game stuttering issue, because the game has stutter issues. But uh, okay, I mean benchmark, as you can see, we have a frame time flat graph, so uh, interesting because the final game doesn't work that smooth. It has uh, loading stuttering problems here and there. Uh, you, it's noticeable. If you want me to make an actual video on this game, let me know down in the comments below and I'll test the both GPUs in just in this game and uh, also show you what I meant by the stuttering in this game. Those who played this game before know what I mean. I'm sure you know what I mean because this was really hard to fix. It was a problem of uh, Steam before, then you had to change some stuff with this mod that there was there and then in the end they also found out that it did not lag <laughs> so <laughs> because of the um, this mod and steam it was actually a problem of the game the DRM mode that steam used uh, in this game because uh, windows store edition that you can download final fantasy 15 there that game worked without a starter it worked perfectly fine you can also actually um I tested it out, I have this game bought, but I tested out the pirated version because uh, I heard people say that one doesn't have any starters as well because it's based on uh, I, earlier cracks. Then uh, also the Windows Store version, people said on some forum I read that it works better and uh, I confirmed that when I was playing uh, the Windows Store version that there's no stuttering found. I mean, it's way less apparent, like 80% less than what I had with the Steam version. So uh, if you are buying this game, uh, maybe go to Windows Store and buy that version because uh, it works better than the Steam one. But uh, if you want to have it on Steam so you can play it on other devices as well, like Steam Deck that I have, then yeah, you will have to mod it and uh, use some tweaks to make the experience uh, better on uh, PC with Steam version than on uh, Windows Store version. So yeah, look at the fish we got, man. It's so big. It's so big. Come on. Woo. But uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. We are getting almost to the end of the video, guys. Uh, I think we have one more game to showcase. 
but yeah it's another long one about uh, 56 minutes so uh, i'm doing this chat live after i've edited the video so there might be some mistakes here and there because i'm already late by posting this it took me way too long to actually uh, set this machine up test benchmark i wanted to make some other video before and post but uh, i was really focused on uh, this small intel nook machine i couldn't leave it uh, hanging so uh, i focused all my time uh, that i had left from uh, work of course uh, to this uh, machine and recording of these videos so yeah you can see guys and compare now how a 770 m 16 gigabytes of version works and then uh, with uh, comparison to the a 770 dedicated gpu and as you can see i mean from the video uh, it's holding up pretty good especially with that uh, 75 watt less usage than the, the gpu has uh, in the main rig which is uh, good uh, i'm sure uh, i wanted to try and uh, undervolt it as well but uh, the voltage is locked the uh, i think a few other st stuff are locked you you also can't set uh, the power limit even though in arcos tool you could set it higher but it's uh, limited hard to the 117 watts was max i think that i saw and yeah maybe there's something we can do but uh, if you run arcos tool on this uh, a770m system uh, it shows there unsupported 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 but uh, you can actually force megahertz clock speed to the most higher limit and then it actually boosts higher because in some games right now here in final fantasy benchmark you can see it's actually boosting pretty well 950 megahertz score clock is uh, probably the highest this gpu can go temperature is looking same as the uh, graphic card i have in my main rig so uh, the temperature is there there uh, i have set in bios this custom fan profile because it's not available in arc control panel with uh, a770m so you have to actually set it in bios how to how this uh, fan boosts the, its fan speed because it's not tied to the gpu it's tied to the motherboard itself and uh, yeah it's a little bit of a different design but uh, okay you, see, you saw we got a fairly high score on both of the systems a 770 m work better and yeah woohoo the last game it's uh, xess again supported game you know well, which one this is right look at these guys it's dying light but what we are using here is uh, ultra high quality i mean it's high quality ray tracing preset with xcss at quality and uh, interesting we are maintaining about 35 40 fps with uh, xcss on and ray tracing at 1440p so um, it's uh, going pretty good but uh, what we'll actually do now is run the benchmark huh? Well, let's run the benchmark because this game has a benchmark mode in the options but uh, yeah let me just quickly go here to the options and show you what kind of settings I use see high quality ray tracing preset is there 1440p xss quality I just turn off this chromatic aberration and you know those awful filters that nobody likes and uh, yeah let's run the benchmark and compare the gpus between themselves and see how it works this is the last game we will be testing in this video it's uh, pretty long as it is so uh, let me not uh, waste any more of your time for today because it's sunday i want you to have a good time hope you do and uh, yeah let's see how uh, dying light 2 with xss at ray tracing mode compares between a770 and a770 m gpu as we can see guys here we go with the top corners both corners we can see and compare the fps and uh, as we expected we are losing in this uh, optimized game of dying light 2 and now that it is at launch it was i mean okay but now it's a lot better so uh, yeah it's an optimized game now and uh, as you can see just like we expected 7 6 fps difference between a770 m and a770 gpu so what shall we say the conclusion of uh, this video it is it's a pretty nice small system it's not that loud i cannot hear it when i game with headphones on 
And uh, once it's on, I also have it co it's silent setting. It's really, really quiet, guys. Trust me, it's a good system. But uh, if you are getting the enthusiast kit, make sure you know how to open this one up. You now have the video. And to add your system RAM and disk to enjoy it and play some games. It's really good. It's an option if uh, you don't want to build yourself a graphic uh, Intel Arc system. So uh, you buy this one, add the RAM or buy a system that already has this inside and you can expect a kind of similar performance than what you would with the dedicated GPU in your uh, build if you would build it yourself, of course. But yeah, Dying Light 2 uh, should be working okay, not that I recommend high quality uh, ray tracing uh, just check digital foundry video they have optimized ray tracing setting there uh, i tested it out and it works around 60 fps at 1440p on both systems so yeah that's it guys thank you for staying with me so long i hope you enjoyed this video i'm sorry for uh, the uh, wind blowing effect when i was recording myself opening the nook system uh, update uh, came to my phone and camera and something got broken so uh, yeah there's that i mean it's watchable but it is what it is <laughs> anyways guys Make sure you like, subscribe to the Graphic Arc channel to stay on top of the news for Intel Arc related stuff. And uh, yeah, see ya really soon, really soon. I got a few more planned videos coming out for you to check. So uh, have a good Sunday. Uh, let's go. Bye bye.